New World is an MMORPG made by Amazon Gaming Studios that has no subscription fee, just a box price and paid expansions about once a year. And in this video I'd like to give you my opinion on whether or not this game is worth your time in 2024, after about 6,400 hours of experience on this game. So let's get into it. So in order for me to help you find out if this game is right for you in 2024, I'm going to break down my audience into four types of people, and then I'll go through and show the strengths and weaknesses of the game for your preferred playstyle to help you make a more informed decision with your time. And I'll also throw in a few personal thoughts that I have about the game, just in general. The four types of people will be Casual PvE, Hardcore PvE, and then Casual PvP, and Hardcore PvP. Now of course these are spectrums and most people will fall somewhere in the middle of these extremes and you'll have to make the personal decision for yourself if you think the game would offer you a net positive experience. But I'll just present the information, so let's begin the breakdown. For the casual PvEers among you, I think you're going to find New World to be exceptionally well worth your time in 2024. New World offers one of the highest value for time and value for money propositions in the entire MMO industry, and they impressingly achieve this without offering much in terms of pay to win. The only pay to win features in the game are the annual expansion, which is about $30 and happens around October of each year, and the paid season pass, which offers very little over the free version and only really gives you a few items you could sell for a relatively small amount of gold. So as a casual pve -er, I think you'll enjoy the fact that New World does a really good job of making you play to obtain the strongest weapons and armor in the game. I choose the word play here very carefully because they tend to not make you work for much. I'm whooping his ass with the life staff. <laughs> I got it! Oh my god, the first kill. How'd you get Bro, there is down. there is nothing difficult in this game. They just give you anything you want just for logging on. If you've really only got a few hours a week to log on, maybe because you have kids and two jobs, then I truly believe if you have a specific goal in mind you want to achieve on New World, you'll be able to do it and truthfully not be too far behind the hardcore PvE players if you use your time right. And that's something pretty special about New World that you're not going to find on other MMOs, at least without paying to be able to keep up with the hardcore PvEers. And as a general observation, guarding my wallet isn't something I find myself doing throughout the thousands of hours I've spent on this game. As there's no subscription fee, the premium season pass isn't that much better than the free one and I personally don't purchase it, and the cosmetics, well let's just say you probably won't be that interested in them. Now do I think the game should be monetized better? As a hardcore PvE and PvP player, yes I do. Not in a pay to win sense, but perhaps a subscription fee wouldn't hurt as they've missed multiple content deadlines and could probably use the funds to hire a bigger team. You know, the decision to ensure higher quality was worth a few days in my mind even though I know it broke a little trust. And I also know going forward, it means we have to work hard to earn your trust again. That's unacceptable. Uh, we need to find ways to sort of find these issues more internally and get them into the build when we release it, not a week later. So that's something we're working on and looking for process improvements on. Bottom line, we gotta do better. Gotta support the small indie company, you know what I mean? But as a casual player, I don't think these missed content deadlines would affect you all that much. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to take advantage of the fact that this game has no subscription fee, and at least you know whatever few hours you can play each week will be meaningful towards your character's progression. So overall, if you're a casual PvEer, I rate New World in 2024 a 9 out of 10. It's very hard to beat the value for time and value for money proposition that this game offers. Now for the hardcore PvEers, it's not such a clear choice. The same positives do hold true that there's no subscription fee and pay to win is almost non-existent, but the dwindling player base becomes a much more glaring problem. In a recent video I filmed for the series I'm making on this game, which has not been uploaded yet, but I was trying to get a group of players together to run an endgame dungeon, and it took me an hour and 45 minutes to find players that wanted to do it. 
Now this is not something you're going to struggle with as a casual player, but as a hardcore player you're really going to start to notice the player base falling off. It peaks every October with the expansion, and then it drops off a cliff like a month afterwards, so that's just something you're going to have to be ready for. I've spent the majority of my 6400 hours on this game PvEing with friends, and it can be really fun, but to be honest, when you're doing hardcore PvE on New World, you're not doing it for a reward. Oftentimes the reward is the fun you're having while doing it, which can get old and oftentimes very unmotivating. This game also suffers from a major junk problem. There are so many useless and common items that spam your inventory from endgame PvE that you can be paralyzed just trying to sort through it all and see what you should drop and what might be valuable and maybe you should keep. I can't count the number of times where I needed to clean out my inventory to have space to do another dungeon, but it was just such an annoying task that I just logged off instead. This is not a common problem unless you've done so much PvE that all of your storage sheds are bursting at the seams and will only apply to a small percentage of viewers, but if you're in that small percent, then be warned. And so New World in 2024 for the hardcore PvE player gets a solid 3 out of 10, and I absolutely do not recommend it. And most of that negative rating is for the very same reasons I gave such a high rating for the casual player. They simply do not reward hard work in this game in terms of PvE. Now that's not to say that you won't have fun playing New World in 2024 as a hardcore PvE player, just don't expect a reward beyond the fun that you're having in the moment, because you will be disappointed. I know plenty of people who only do endgame dungeons and in a very serious manner, and they try to set speed records each week for the sheer fun of breaking old records, and that's how they like to play the game. But in a character progression sense, they are not getting that far ahead of the casual player, and that's just a theme that you have to have in mind when you're putting in all this effort. You're like, this probably isn't worth my time right now, I should either be playing another game, doing homework, or something like that. This game is not meant to be played in such a hardcore fashion, at least in my opinion. And now for the PvP side of New World. The casual PvPer will likely have a mixed experience on New World in 2024, as they've had for basically the past two years since game launch. There haven't been many updates for PvP, and the ones that we have had have been pretty marginal. Except for the reward track system, that system is actually pretty nice and is going to be the main source of your income and gear upgrades if you're a casual player in New World. If you're doing a few hours a week of group PvP activities like 3v3 arenas and outpost rush, you'll likely get a very solid set of gear for free from the PvP track reward system, and very expensive gear upgrades will only offer marginal returns in terms of your performance, and most of your performance improvements will come from working on your fundamentals. If you focus your few hours per week on trying to understand how New World Combat works on a fundamental level, you will certainly achieve a high skill level, as the skill ceiling is pretty low to begin with relative to other PvP MMOs. Does your group have a healer? Do you know how to left click and dodge? You'll probably win about 80% of your 3v3s. I can tell you that from personal experience. The worst part about PvP on New World in 2024 as a casual player is going to be getting invited to wars, as the selection process can be pretty tough if you don't have connections and people don't know you by name, but luckily for you the loot from wars, while not terrible, is nothing account changing the vast majority of the time, and you can still have a ton of fun in other PvP game modes while earning solid gold and gear pieces through the PvP track. So for the casual PvP or on New World in 2024, I'm going to give it the same rating that I would have given it for the past two years, which is a solid 8 out of 10. It's a very playable game and you can get a good amount of character progress done in just a few short hours each week, but you won't receive as many participation trophies as the casual PvE or will, meaning less value for your time overall, but still, definitely in my opinion, worth your time in 2024. The PvP can be quite fun. And lastly, I'll touch on the hardcore PvP or on New World in 2024. You will have much more of an endgame than the hardcore PvE or solely because PvP combat is so much more difficult to optimize than PvE combat and you'll always have that one tiny part of your setup that you'd like to change, but you can't afford it yet, or you haven't gotten lucky and received it yet as a drop, or you can't justify how much it's listed for in the trading post, so you just keep telling yourself you're going to wait for it to get cheaper. Whatever it is, there's going to be something that keeps you playing, much more so than the hardcore PvE'er, whose setups are pretty easy to optimize. 
and recently I've been getting into the more hardcore side of PvP on New World, and while you do feel the lack of updates, such as still only having one Outpost Rush map since the launch of the game, you do always get a nice dopamine hit every hour or so from the PvP reward track, and you never know when that one piece of gear you're looking for will pop up. Also, wars are a ton of fun once people know your name and invite you to discords to participate. They are seriously some of the most fun group MMO content you can experience on any MMO, and it's very cool to have access to something like that on a game that has no subscription fee. That alone is enough to keep you coming back to this game if you get into that scene. Now you will feel the dwindling player population in the same way that the hardcore pve -er does, just not as extreme because some of the PvP game modes such as Outpost Rush does have cross-server functionality so games are rolling 24-7, you're not going to have to wait 2 hours for a queue to fill. And where you're really going to feel it is in the open world. Open world PvP is basically non-existent in this game anymore, which is sad because that was the original design of this game. But there's just such a small amount of players lately that the chances of bumping into someone in the open world is fairly low, and the chances of that other player being flagged up is astronomically low. And this will force you into designated PvP game modes to get any meaningful account progression done. Which is lame, but that's what happens when your game only gets one expansion per year, and why I personally think they should start charging a subscription fee and massively ramping up content releases. So, I rate being a hardcore PvPer on New World in 2024 a solid 7 out of 10, which is a very high score for a hardcore player. It's much better than being a hardcore PvEer, but you're just going to receive less value for your time than the casual PvP player will, and overall you're going to experience diminishing returns and rewards, such as you can only run 40 3v3 arenas per day. I can't tell you how many times I've hit that cap, and I wasn't even halfway through my night playing with my friends, having a blast, and then the game says, oh, here's the arbitrary limit of 40 3v3s, I guess we're going to force you to go do something else for the night. It's really stupid how there's random limits like that in the game, but that's just something you're going to experience as a hardcore player. So it seems we have a very balanced result. The highest single score went to the PvE side, however the highest average score went to the PvP side, which is a surprising but very good result in my opinion. The game is fairly balanced, especially for how many updates have just fallen through and disappointed the community. I say the game is in a fairly good place right now overall. If you're looking for a new MMO to play leading into 2024, I do recommend New World. I know a lot of people are contrary to that right now, but I do recommend New World. There's nothing else out until we get into the later quarters of 2024, at which point Ashes of Creation is going to be going into Alpha 2 testing, and that is probably going to be the best MMO of all times. If you've not made an account yet for Ashes of Creation, consider using my referral link in the description down below. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. That game looks insane. However, that's not till late into 2024, so we still have a lot of playtime left on New World. And like I said, if you haven't started, it's not a bad time to start, especially if you'd like to consider playing it casually. I don't see how you can go wrong, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys with the next New World video on Saturday. See you then.